CBW Productions and the Knighthood Project present Batman Year One. Written by Wyatt Bowden. Edited by Joseph E.W. Produced by CBW and the Knighthood Project. the means, the skills, the dedication, the anger. So what is this feeling that's holding me back? Why does it still feel like I'm not ready for what comes next? How is that even possible? After all the years, all the training, all the waiting, how can I not be ready? I'm strong. I'm fast. I have what it takes. So what could possibly be holding me back? When will I finally be ready? Haven't I already spent enough time waiting for this moment? Thomas! Stay behind me, Bruce! Now what did that tree ever do to you, Master Bruce? What is it, Alfred? You have a guest waiting for you inside. Send them away. I'm not taking any visitors. Indeed. I already said as much, but she... She? Yes, sir. She's a reporter from the Gotham Tribune. The moment I found out she was a reporter, I told her there was absolutely no chance that you would... <laughs> Tell Miss Vale I'll be right in. You'll meet with her. If I don't meet with her now, she'll just keep coming around, and that could endanger the mission. Might as well just get it over with since she's shown up on my doorstep. Very well, sir. That's why I'm not ready. The wound is still fresh even after all these years. I have to wait. I have to wait. Look at all this old junk. Who honestly needs this much interior decor? And these books... One of them catch your eye? Oh! Mr. Wayne, I'm sorry, I was just... Judging a book by its cover? I know. Isn't there an old saying against that? Oh, you heard that. It's fine. I know I kind of deserve it after what happened at the airport. But you should know. A lot of the style of this room was my father's doing, not mine. Same goes for the books on those shelves. My father was always more interested in non-fiction, given how intense his day-to-day -day was at the hospital. I've always been more partial to detective novels. Really? Oh, yes. To me, there's nothing quite more exhilarating than solving a good mystery. For instance, right now I'm trying to figure out just why it is you would even want to come see me. After the first impression, I made. You mean when you acted like a jerk in front of all of those cameras? What makes you think that was an act? I may not know you that well, Mr. Wayne, but... As someone who works in entertainment, I know when someone is putting on a show. <laughs> well, aren't you a sharp one? You can also drop the haughty billionaire attitude while you're at it. I didn't come to talk to a mask. I came to talk to you. All right, Miss Vale. You officially have my attention. What is it that you want? Well, it's been over a month since you've been back, and all anyone is talking about is how aloof you've been. 
And? And I don't think that's exactly what you're trying to go for, given the larger-than-life performance you gave at the airport. I'm still not seeing your point, Miss Vale. Okay, think about it like this. You want to be seen as some major socialite, right? Well, that can't exactly happen if you're shut into your mansion and closed off from the world doing whatever it is you're doing. You need someone that will paint the picture you want Gotham to see you as. And you're volunteering to be my glorified publicist? Not so much that as I am insisting that we use each other to a mutual benefit. I see. You want exclusives to help catapult your career. Is that really such a bad idea? Think about it, Mr. Wayne, my stories will keep Gotham from asking the questions you don't want to answer. And you will be helping me get a leg up over the stuffed shirts in my industry. Especially that smug gremlin, Jack Ryder. <laughs> ah, so this is really about rivalry. That's something I'm a little more familiar with. You've had a rival before? It was a little different from your experience. Of course. But he was definitely a constant source of irritation. I had a bully that terrorized me during my time in the Excelsior Preparatory School. Really? Anyone I would know? Depends. Are you familiar with anyone named Tommy Elliot? Elliot? You're not talking about Thomas Elliot, the famous surgeon? He was a bully? Oh, he was an absolute menace. Our families were friends, so our parents insisted we do the same. Of course, that all changed after both my parents and his father passed. You probably wouldn't think so to look at him now, being the charming success he is. But he does have quite the mean streak in him. That actually does sound a lot like Ryder that bad, huh? Oh, God, he's insufferable. But with your help, I could finally knock him off his high horse. What do you say? You do owe me for what you said to me at the airport. Well, when you put it that way, how could I possibly refuse? You'll do it? Absolutely. In fact, Alfred, could you please come here? Yes, sir. Miss Vale has brought it to my attention that I've been too shut in in this large old house as of late. I think we should do something to rectify that. What are you doing? Taking your advice. Hmm, sounds intriguing. What did you have in mind? Prepare some invitations and call in a catering crew. We're going to hold a housewarming party. Right away, sir. Oh, wow. You really exited in a hurry. Alfred is always the most in his element when he's serving for events. You see how happy he was just now? You can't buy that kind of joy. I'm confused, though. Why would you want to hold a party? Doesn't that kind of negate what the purpose of our arrangement is? Not necessarily. You'll still get your story. You just won't have to exaggerate any details now. You're talking like I'll actually be at this function. Oh, I hope you will. I do need a plus one, after all. Me? Mr. Wayne, I really don't- Not only will you get to write a first-hand account of the events, but this will put you right alongside some of the most influential people in Gotham. Something I imagine Mr. Ryder wouldn't be able to accomplish, even with whatever connections he might have at his disposal. Wow. Mr. Wayne, I don't know what to say. Then say nothing, and get ready for a night to remember. I really do appreciate this, Mr. Wayne. It is the very least I could do, Miss Vale. But please... Call me Bruce. Only if you call me Vicky. Okay. Then I look forward to seeing you at the party, Vicky.
Yes, Alfred? My apologies, Master Bruce. I wanted to know if Miss Vale would like to stay for lunch. I seem to have accidentally over-proportioned while preparing. Huh. Is that right? That would be a first for you in the last twenty years. What can I say, sir? Uh, perhaps I lost my touch for portion control while you were away. I'm sure. You hungry? Honestly, I'm starving. Then it's settled. Come along to the dining room, you two. I have already prepared the table. <laughs> Flass, watch where you're going. You almost hit. <laughs> Lighten up, Jimmy. They got out of the way in time. Besides, they heard the sirens. They should have known that meant we were in a hurry. Uh. So anyway, I need to talk to you, Jimmy. Oh, yeah? What about? Well, it's actually Loeb that wanted me to talk to you, but, you know. Uh-huh. It's about that scolding you gave Martinez and Ferris the other day. You mean the officer I caught drinking on duty and the other one I caught stealing from the evidence lockup? Okay, okay, I, I know. Uh, they weren't exactly using their heads, but uh, these are good guys, Jimmy. No officer should ever be drinking on the job. Nor should anyone be taking anything from evidence without authorization, Flass. Uh, but, but that case is well over a year old now. Ferris was just taking that toy out to give to his kid. It's not a lost and found, Flass. That toy is filled with cocaine. He was gonna take it out. Oh, I bet he was. <sighs> Come on, Jimmy. Yeah, no one's perfect here, but uh, Ferris's heart was in the right place. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Uh, what was that? Uh, I'll let him keep the damn toy. But the cocaine stays locked up. All right, all right, fine. Look, Jimmy, my point is that the commission's worried that you aren't fitting in the way you should, especially with the way you're coming down on the guys. You need to take the stick out of your ass and go with the flow more. Uh-huh. All right, well, maybe you don't care about what Loeb thinks, but you should care about the guys. They're the ones out here with us, and they need to know they can count on you. I will always have a fellow officer's back if the moment calls for it, Flass. But wouldn't everything feel so much better if you knew they had yours, too? Especially with, you know, you having that baby on the way? I'm done talking about this. All right, Jimmy. Suit yourself. Who's the officer in charge here? That would be me. Lieutenant Essen. Detective Gordon. Oh, so you're the infamous Jimmy Gordon Flass won't shut up about. I prefer Jim. I figured as much. Speaking of Flass, where is the big dumb Goliath? <laughs> Tell me about it. Mind bringing me up to speed at least? Oh, happily. Guy inside the building is holding six kids hostage. According to his bosses, he was just your average school bus driver before today. What's his name? His name's Jerry Keene. According to the officer who called this in and tried following them inside, Jerry's completely off his rocker. He thinks the kids are in danger from some supernatural force, and that he is their guardian angel. Jesus, is that really the case? It's what I was told. Do we know yet if this guy's experienced these kinds of behaviors before? 
We've already gotten a hold of his records and we're trying to call his doctor, but honestly, does it even matter right now? Uh, I suppose not. Our first priority is getting those kids to safety. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, but we're having trouble breaching at the moment. What do you mean? If you look up, you'll see that he's taken up a position by the window. He's already warned us that if we come close, that he'll start delivering the innocent from evil. Wonderful. That's SWAT? Oh god, not Brendan. Who's Brendan? Oh, you haven't met? Can't say I've had the pleasure in the past month I've been here. Plus, I still have Flas watching me like a hawk. Did you hear about the bombing in Robison Park last week? That was him? Yep. Brendan turned a peaceful protest to full-blown riot by blasting half the park straight to hell with everyone in it. You're kidding. I wish I was. I'm surprised it's not a damn crater with how much C4 he detonated. How can he get away with something like that? Let's just say, it pays to be the Commissioner's attack dog. I just thought you should know, Essen. We're breaching in five. Breaching? There are kids in there! Howard, if you burst in there now, guns blazing, you're gonna cause a lot of civilian casualties! Ah, people lose their lives every day. You know that as well as I do. That doesn't mean we need to charge in like it's the wild goddamn west. I have my orders. I'm still the officer in charge here, and I'm ordering you to stand down. I take my orders from the top, so forgive me if I'd rather listen to the guy who ensures both of our paychecks over a hormonal bleeding hide. Hormonal? Where the hell do you get off? Excuse me. What if I go in alone? And unarmed. What? Gordon, no. Agreed. That guy up there is a lunatic. Are you trying to make sure you get both those kids and yourself killed? Oh, so now you care about the lives of those kids. Excuse me? Look, I know this isn't the best idea, but maybe seeing only one of us go in will put him at ease. And going in unarmed is the only way he'd let someone in without hurting one of those kids. And what? You think you could just talk him down? This is insane! I'm pulling my men together and we're going in. Brendan, shut up! Are you sure about this, Jim? Uh, not really. But it's my only play to try and get everybody out of this alive. Essen, you'd rather send this newbie unarmed and towards certain death then just let me do my damn job? In case you've already forgotten, I'm still the officer in charge here. But the commissioner- Then take it up with me after we get those kids out of there. This is my scene and my decision, and I know Gordon's plan sounds crazy, but I think I'd rather take a gamble on him than the sure bet of you getting a bunch of kids killed any day. Your funeral, Gordon. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Hey! Is he always this much of an asshole? No. I imagine he sleeps at some point. <laughs> well, you at least bought those kids a few more moments. So make them count, Gordon. I'll do my best. You got a megaphone? Here. This is Detective James Gordon of the GCPD. We know you don't want to harm the kids, Jerry, but we also can't just leave them up there with you. Which is why I have volunteered to come up there and take their place as your hostage. What? That wasn't part of the plan, Gordon! Funny. It was always a part of mine. Gordon, stop! As you can see, I'm coming in unarmed, as a sign of good faith. Please remain calm and do not commit to any actions until you and I have had a chance to speak. Jimmy, what the hell is this you're trying to pull? I'm not pulling anything. I'm just actually trying to make a difference instead of hiding behind my badge. Well, it should be at least interesting to see how this plays out. I 
think this place was called the Haven before it turned into this. Didn't I have a friend who lived here? Huh? Frankie. That was his name. Frankie Munson. He had two pet cats and his dad was the super here when we were kids. And I wonder what happened. Stop your crying. It hurts my ears when you do that. God, what am I even talking about right now? Come on, Jim. You need to focus. Don't let your nerves get the better of you. Not with all those lives on the line. Open it up! Slowly! Get your hands up! Now! All right. They're going up. Just take it easy, Jerry. Huh? How do you know my name? You drive a bus for a public school. How do you think we know your name? Ugh, goddamn demons! Always spying on everything we do. Just like in Kaznia. What happened in Kaznia? Well, I had to... I... I... Ugh, no! I know what you're doing! You are just trying to distract me so you can corrupt these kids! <laughs> but I won't let you do it! I won't let you turn their souls gangrene! Jerry. You need to calm down. There's nothing to be calm about. Not in this city. And look, I don't necessarily disagree. But think about the situation we found ourselves in here. You've endangered a lot of lives, Jerry. I know! You think I don't know how this looks? I'm not... It... It wasn't supposed to be like this. None of this should have happened. Why don't you tell me about it? What went wrong today? <sighs> it's not just been today. It's been like this since I got back from overseas. What division did you serve? The Air Force. All the recruiters said I'd be treated like a hero. That what I did was gonna matter. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah. Like I was diseased. I did what my country asked, and they forgot about me! I kinda know what that's like. But these kids are innocent, and there aren't any demons trying to corrupt them. You're wrong! The demons are everywhere. They were the ones who recruited me. They were the ones posing as my superiors. They were the ones who sent me to Arkham. Arkham? But see, they made a mistake. Their little pills kept me blind. But they must have given me the wrong dosage, because now I see them all for what they really are. Jerry, we can talk all about your doctor's negligence after you put the gun down. I was supposed to be a hero, goddammit! But I guess this isn't a city for heroes. Just monsters play and pretend. What can I even say to that? It's not like what he's saying is completely wrong. But for the sake of these kids, that isn't what he needs to hear right now. Look, I know things may seem bleak now, but it is possible for things to change. It just takes time. No! Nothing changes! <laughs> Only pain is certain! Jerry! Don't move! <laughs> Don't do this, Jerry. The city may have forgotten about you, but is this really how you want to be remembered? Holding a gun to a child's head. I... I can't let the demons get them. I can't let them be fooled like I was. Jerry. Please. This is how I redeem myself. This is how I protect the innocent from evil. Heroes don't take innocent lives. Soldiers take lives without thought to the consequences of their actions. A hero always finds another way. A hero always protects the innocent. 
A hero doesn't give up hope. I... I don't... Jerry, listen to me. I came up here to take their place. That's still on the table. But I'd really like it if we all walked out of here. You don't want these kids to get hurt any more than I do. Come on. Be the hero I know you want to be. <laughs> Shh. It's okay now. No one's gonna hurt you. You're safe. Light up, damn you. What? Holy shit. He did it. Crazy son of a bitch did it. He really did. Easy does it, Jerry. We're just gonna walk over to my police cruiser now. Okay. You don't think I hurt them too bad, do you? I didn't mess them up like me. The kids? I mean... They're definitely shaken up, but they'll be fine in time. You did the right thing today, Jerry. I... I did, didn't I? Maybe this is a sign that things will finally... Shots fired! Everyone take cover! Oh, you can all relax. It was just me. Brendan? Why the hell did you open fire? The situation was contained. I was told to take him out. Orders are orders. Nice work, Detective. I gotta admit, I had my doubts, but you really pulled through. Oh! Oh! What the hell was that for? Take off your badge. What? I said take off your badge. You don't deserve to call yourself police. Get the hell off of me, you crazy bastard! Murdering psychopath! All right, all right, that's enough! Cuff this shit out, both of you! Flash, be useful for once and help me! Look, Jim. I know this isn't the result we wanted. But those kids are alive. Can't we just call that a win? I'd listen to it, Jim. I don't want to hear anything from you! He's a murderer, Essen. A rabid dog with a tight leash. I am a good soldier. I follow orders. No matter the cost, you're abusing your authority. You're not fighting a war. Oh, I'm not? Why don't you come down off of that high horse and really, really look at this sorry excuse of a town before telling me this isn't a war zone? Brendan, enough. Pack up your little platoon and move out. But he- I will not repeat myself again. Get the hell out of my crime scene. Ooh. Fine. But this isn't over between us, Gordon. Not by a long shot. Looking forward to it. <sighs> Alright. Glad we cleared that up. Listen, I know you may not feel the best right now, but the press will be here soon and they're going to want to talk to the cop who saved those kids. Are you feeling up to it? No. But I'll make it happen. Okay. You know, despite how it all ended, you still did good there, Jim. Not good enough. Hey, Jimmy, I just- Flass, don't. For once. Just don't. Alright, I'll be in a cruiser when you're ready. All he ever wanted was to be a hero. But now, even in his best moment, all he'll ever be remembered as is the villain. He was right when he said this really isn't a city for heroes. Look what happens when they try.
Does your attack dog have to be in here with us, Commissioner? <laughs> attack dog? Really? You gonna let him keep talking to me like this, Gil? Gentlemen, please. Thank you. First of all, I would like to commend you, James, for your handling of that nasty hostage situation. Thank you, sir. But I would be remiss if I did not address the altercation that happened afterwards between you and Sergeant Brendan. It was more of a sucker punch than an altercation, Gil. Be that as it may, we're going to discuss this and try to see how we can move past it. The floor is yours, James. Do you have anything to say in your defense? The situation was under control when I came out of the building. Are you so certain of that? All the reports have informed me that the man was beyond disturbed. Well, however Sergeant Brendan justified it, he still shot a civilian that was no longer posing an active threat. He was in handcuffs and he executed him like he was pulling off a hit for the mob. <laughs> now hold on a damn minute. In fact, he caused more of a disturbance by having opened fire. Is that right? So, are you insisting that I made a wrong decision when I was told of the severity of the situation? The shoot to kill order came from me, after all. Not at all, sir. I just think you were given unreliable information. Unreliable? Gil, are you seriously going to listen to- Howard, if you can't keep your temper in check, then I'm going to have to ask you to leave. We'll discuss this more later. Go tend to your reports for now. Yeah, sure thing, Gil. Now, where were we? Sir, I know you aren't happy with how I handled things with Brendan, but his behavior was unacceptable and dangerous. Dangerous, you say? Do tell. Well, think about it. Jerry Keene was a former soldier of the U.S. Air Force. And we've learned the only reason he acted the way he did today was because his doctor failed to write him the correct prescription. Sure, we may have good press now for saving the kids. But in the wrong hands, Brendan executing an unarmed assailant that was in custody could result in a lot of negative articles. How so? They could end up claiming he was targeted for his mental illness. Plus, the forgotten and abused veteran story never really sits well with the general public. What's your point, James? My point is that we could have ended this whole mess with him getting proper treatment for his problems. Now, instead, you've just handed the media a loaded gun to hit you with more bad press. Press you said you wanted to see change. And I take it you're insisting that you can salvage this somehow? I can certainly make sure the focus is where it deserves to be, without making a spectacle. Unless, of course, you feel a certain way otherwise. <sighs> Very well. Do what you think is best for the department. But some form of punishment will have to be given for your behavior, well-intentioned or not. I understand. Hmm. Hmm. You've got the graveyard shift for the next month, James. Stuck purely on desk work until I say otherwise. Fine. Will that be all, sir? <sighs> yes. Yes, you can go now. Well, what do you make of that display, Arnold? <laughs> He's not fitting in. Is that so? This isn't the first time he's gotten self-righteous on the job. He did something just as insufferable last week when we busted that drug ring at the Narrows Baptist Church. So, Gordon's reading the priest his rights, and naturally, the Padre thinks this is the moment to palm him a few Franklins to look the other way. You know, business as usual. But then Gordon just tosses it back into his face, like it's diseased. Immediately cuffs him and hauls him outside to the squad car. 
Oh my. That's not all. When we get back, he lectures the whole squad for what seemed like an hour about ethics. Jesus, Gil, where did you find this guy? Hmm. In all honesty, I thought I found him at the end of his rope. I thought he would be so grateful for the opportunity to change course after the mess he made in Chicago that he would just do as he's told. But it seems that absolutely isn't the case given how quick he reacts to the slightest injustice. <sighs> I had such high hopes for him too. Something needs to be done about him, and soon. I don't disagree. But he was right about that, uh, PR issue. Given his success with rescuing those kids, the press loves him now, which puts us into a tight situation. Meaning it would cause a disaster for us to deal with it if he just suddenly disappeared. Precisely. Arnold, you understand how we do things here? Think of my position. It would be uh, unwise of us to just get rid of Gordon when we still have so many other options at our disposal to uh, nudge him into falling in line. All right. What'd you have in mind? In the Bible, it is said God once destroyed a city simply for its arrogance. That was the price they had to pay for going against the natural order. Now... Tomorrow night, a representative of the Force has been requested to attend the Homecoming Gala at Wayne Manor. You're volunteering Gordon for that? I am. But only so that way the rich orphan can meet the hero cop and hopefully make a wealthy connection for potential donations. Given Wayne's past, I'm sure what happened with those kids no doubt touched a nerve within him. That's pretty shrewd. Isn't it? Anyway, what's to say that after Gordon has had enough time to rub elbow with Gotham's elite, he gets a call to come back to the station. Only, once he returns to the parking garage, you and the boys can show him the price for his arrogance. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe it was stupid of me to goad the commissioner like that. But goddamn if it didn't feel a little satisfying watching that bloated goat get red in the face when he realized the ball was in my court. He may have hired me to help his department look good, but that doesn't mean I can't use that to my advantage. <sighs> if only I could have used it to bring more justice to Jerry Keene. The hell? You better have a damn good reason breaking into my house. Whoever you are. Freeze! Barbara? Hi, honey! Surprise? What are you doing here? I wasn't expecting you for another week. I got an early flight. I wanted to surprise you with dinner, but you don't really have much in here currently. Honestly, James, this entire place is in dire need of a woman's touch. I certainly won't stop you. Admittedly, I haven't been home a lot since starting the new job. How has that been? Work, I mean. Better now that you're here. Hmm. <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> oh! Jim, he's kicking. He's kicking? Listen. Well, everything I'm dealing with and all my troubles melted away in an instant by one little sound. How amazing is that? He sounds like he's trying to tell us he wants out. Oof, it's starting to feel like that too. Well, in the meantime, why don't I cook you a little something for the hectic day you've had trying to get here? But I was going to do that for you. You're already doing more than enough trying to bring life into this world. 
Let me handle this one. <laughs> My hero. When I was a boy, my parents would throw parties like this on such a regular basis. I was always entranced by the sight of all the people dressed in their best to impress. But I was always confused as to why they did it. When I asked my father, he said that sometimes people need an excuse to forget who they are for a night. He called these parties necessary evils since this meant he could use them as an opportunity to get donations from the more tight-fisted of Gotham's elite. They only show up for the sake of appearances, after all. They never willingly give so much as a used hanky to someone in need without a little arm-twisting otherwise. But he knew that they would give their left arm to protect their precious reputations. A little money sprinkled in the right direction, and they all get to keep their true natures hidden for a while longer. I can't criticize too much in that regard, though. This whole affair is just another glorified appearance, so that everyone can see Bruce Wayne, billionaire playboy. I hate having to keep this up. But remember, Bruce, it's all for the sake of the mission. Bruce! There you are, I thought you were going to miss your own party. My mother had her own pension for tardiness and fashionably late entrances. Perhaps it's just inerrant. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come over here. There's someone you should get to know. Mr. Wayne, may I present Harvey Dent. A pleasure to finally meet the long-lost Bruce Wayne. Likewise. You must be the new district attorney I've been reading about that's been fighting the good fight. <laughs> well, I'm certainly doing my best, at least. <laughs> Listen to him sounding modest, like he doesn't have the majority of the Gotham underworld shaking right now. Oh, come now, Missville. I wouldn't say I have them shaking. But I've been known to ruffle a few collars when needed. <laughs> well, in a city like this, every little bit helps. Absolutely, and I'm so glad you feel that way, because I would love to talk to you about my vision for the future of Gotham, if you have a moment. <clears throat> Only if Miss Vale is able to join us for the exclusive. Of course. The more people I can count on, the better. Besides, how could I say no to such a determined woman? You can't. She'll just show up at your house until she gets what she wants. I hate these kinds of events. They're just an excuse for the rich and arrogant to get drunk and pat each other on the back for doing nothing while they pretend the city isn't burning outside of their top floor windows. I think I read an Edgar Allan Poe story like that once. I wish Barbara had been able to come too, but things have been rough with the pregnancy. At least she's still able to sleep soundly at night. No good heavens! I got it. Oh, my goodness. It certainly could have had a poor end. Happy to help. I'm just sorry I wasn't paying better attention to where I was going in the first place. <clears throat> That's quite alright, sir. Uh, there's nothing to fret over. Nothing was made amiss. Would you care for a drink? Uh, thanks. Forgive my boldness, sir, but you aren't exactly from Gotham, are you? That obvious, huh? I lived in Gotham all my adult life, sir. Newcomers tend to have a certain way about them. Like a fish out of water vibe? <laughs> well, that's certainly one way of posing it. I grew up here as a kid, but I've spent a good amount of my life in Chicago. I've only recently moved back. Ah, 
Welcome back then, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pennyworth. Alfred Pennyworth. At your service, sir. Pennyworth, right. You're the Wayne family's butler. I was. Now I am tasked with only one charge. A grown one at that. I bet it's at least been nice having Mr. Wayne home after all this time. Well, I wish I could say it's all been perfect since his return, but Master Wayne has become a bit different from when I last saw him. Different? How so? Uh, um, oh, do forgive my rambling, but I should discuss the Master's affairs. I understand. I apologize for overstepping. Curiosity is part of my job, I'm afraid. Think nothing of it, sir. Alfred, I'm sorry to interrupt, but one of the servants spilled some champagne onto Mr. Dent. Would you please assist in the cleanup? No one gets a stain out like you. I'm on it, sir. <laughs> now that man has got to be the most determined worker I've ever known. I really don't know where he finds the strength for it all. No kidding. Is he always... In full butler mode? <laughs> Absolutely. Jim Gordon. Gordon. Why does that sound familiar? Oh, yes. The detective who saved the kidnapped school children yesterday. Very commendable work, detective. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. But I was just doing what anyone else would do. I sincerely doubt that. But in any case, I take it you are our police representative for this evening? Well, I probably wouldn't be here otherwise. No offense to you and your lovely home, of course. I've just got a pregnant spouse at home and I'd rather be there for whenever she might need me. None taken. I understand completely. Still, I am glad you came. It's good to shake hands with someone who still takes pride in helping others in this city. Especially children. I was happy to help. From what I understand, care has been in rather short supply around here. Oh, you don't know the half of it. If there had been more officers like you around when I was a boy, maybe I... What are you doing? You can't let the mask slip away from you so easily. Mr. Wayne? Are you all right? Mm hmm? Oh, yes. Of course I am. I apologize for that, Detective. I would hate to spoil the mood. This is a party, after all. That's all right. I mean, you can definitely talk about it if you want. I would, but as the host, I should probably get back to making my rounds. Maybe we could meet up again sometime in the future, so that I can have the opportunity to meet your wife as well. Yeah, sure thing. Excellent. Please enjoy your evening, Detective Gordon. He seemed nice enough for a rich kid. A little strange, but nice all the same. I wish Barbara was here. Or better yet, I wish I was crawling into bed with her instead of standing here with all these stuffed shirts. James! Oh god. Speaking of stuffed shirts... I didn't know Gil had you signed up for this. It's good to see you, my boy. <laughs> good to see you too, sir. <laughs> What's all this sir nonsense? Whatever happened to Uncle Bash? That doesn't seem like an appropriate nickname to give to the mayor of Gotham. Especially when he's technically my boss now. <laughs> oh, I suppose you're right. So, how are you settling in? You haven't asked Commissioner Loeb? I have, but I'm asking you so that I can hear your thoughts on everything. It's been a tough adjustment. This department wasn't what I thought it would be. I see. Not that I'm ungrateful at all for everything you've done for me, Mr. Mayor. But uh, I don't know if the GCPD is necessarily where I fit in. You know... Your father felt the same way when we were coming up together. 
He would tell me all the time about the challenges he would face and all the adversity placed before him. Really? What did he do about it? He lived through it. Persevered, overcame it even. He always told me that even though things seemed bleak, there was always a sliver of hope as long as that hope exists. He couldn't possibly give in to what was happening around him. So, you're saying I should try sticking it out a while longer? I'm saying everything in life has its challenges. It's how we choose to face them that defines us. Sebastian, is that you? Get on over here and share a drink with the man that got you elected. Oh, uh, it seems that's my cue to continue mingling through this evening. Uh, don't be a stranger, James. Call my office to set up an appointment sometime if you ever want to come by and uh, talk. I will. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Is that really my problem? Am I just not willing enough to suck it up and push forward? <sighs> Maybe I could stand to be a little less defensive. Could help things go a little more smoothly with... I'm needed at the station? I thought Merkel was covering for me. I should call him and ask. On second thought, maybe I shouldn't question it too much and just get down there. Maybe something came up. This could be a good chance for me to try doing more of that team player BS Lope is always preaching. Ooh! Ah! Hello again, sir. Hey, Alfred. Could you please pass on a message to Mr. Wayne for me? Of course. Something's come up at the station, so I have to head out and see what's going on. But I enjoyed getting to meet both of you, and... Welcome home, I guess. What a nice fellow. A little strange, but nice all the same. Stupid amateur. The facade has to be perfect. You know this. It has to always be an immaculate performance, without ever breaking character. I won't ever be ready if I keep allowing myself to make these stupid mistakes. Master Bruce? What is it, Alfred? That policeman fellow just left in a bit of a hurry. He asked me to send his thanks and regards, but... Now, something else has come up. If someone's getting too wasted, just cut them off and have them sleep it off in one of the rooms upstairs. Forgive me, sir, but an inebriated patron is the least of our concerns. Carmine Falcone is here. Where is he? He was mingling with the guests. I have since asked that he'd wait for you in the study. Did he say why he was here? He only said he wished to speak with you. Would you like for me to accompany you, sir? No. I'll be fine, Alfred. Just tend to our guests. Hey, Bruce, hold up! Did I just see Carmine Falcone here? Don't worry about it, Vicky. It's being handled. Why would Gotham's most notorious crime lord crash your party? I really don't know. Are you on your way to meet with him now? Would it matter if I was? You should let me come with you, then. Why? So you can add it to your article about the real Bruce Wayne? You... You know about that? About your article that was going to expose me as a two-faced socialite that only thinks about himself? until his image is in danger. Yeah, I do. How did you- It wasn't hard. I made a call to your editor after your visit earlier this week. Money talks, and I have lots of it. Well, enough at least to have him bury the story before you even have a chance to write it. How dare you? You have no right- I have no right to what? Protect myself against a selfish reporter whose only goals are to make herself look better? I mean, it's not like I ever lied about who I am. No, but you definitely lied about how I was going to be helping you. 
All right, then tell me. Why even bother going through with all of this? Why even allow me to be here at all? Because, despite what opinions you have of me, I am a man of my word. If I say I'm going to help someone, I do it. Bruce, I... Enjoy the party, Vicky. I hope you find a better story to one-up Ryder with. Find something interesting on the shelves? <laughs> Not really. I loved him to death, but Tommy had the worst taste in books. My God. Just look at you. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you were barely up to my knee, and now you're practically a spitting image of your old man at that age. Can't even imagine what Tommy would think if he was still... Alfred said you wanted to speak with me. Why? I need an excuse to visit my godchild? Come on, bring it in for your old Uncle Carmine. You do when I haven't seen you since my parents' funeral. Now, will you please stop reaching to make a connection and tell me why you're here, Uncle Carmine? Straight to business. Just like your old man. <laughs> you even got his cold stare. He was always so uptight. Never one to let loose or have any sort of fun. <sighs> I always thought I was pretty good at bringing him out of his shell, but uh, truth is, I never really saw him softening till after he met your ma. It's clear he's not going to get to the point until he feels satisfied with this interaction. <sighs> He may be genuinely trying to connect with me, but given his reputation, it's more likely this is just an act to try and take control of this conversation by pulling on my heartstrings. I might as well play along for now. What were they like together? I only knew them as my parents, but you saw everything they were back then. I did. Your father was the most strong-willed and stubborn man I had ever met. Your mother, though, she was the compassionate one. She was the only one who ever made him budge. Together, they were the most passionate and determined people Gotham could have ever hoped for. Two genuine souls that really believed in a better future for this city. But we all know exactly where all that idealistic Holcomb got him. Right, kid? Yes? Just checking in, sir. Is everything still all right in there? Is it? Mm. We're fine, Alfred. For now. Just keep tending to the party, please. Very well, sir. Never could stand how much he lingers everywhere. Alfred can be a tad overprotective, but do you really blame him? After what happened? Uh, I guess not. But still. Is there anything I need to be protected from in here? They say that knowledge is humanity's whetstone, and our words are the greatest weapons we have as human beings. Which means we should always be sharp and ready for anything. My father used to say that. <laughs> and who do you think taught him that phrase? You still haven't answered my question. What does Gotham's infamous King of Crime want with me? Tonight of all nights. Is that really how I'm known around town? <laughs> See, I like to think of myself as more of a enterprising philanthropist. I'm sure you do but that still doesn't change what you are. Is that right? 
What does that make you, then? You really an aloof playboy, or is there, uh, more under the surface? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, to answer your question, I came to your lovely home tonight of all nights to try and share some of my philanthropy with you. Well, aren't I lucky? I know you're being sarcastic, but you really are. Thousands of people arrive on my doorstep all the time begging me to help them. But you get special treatment because of who you are and what your parents meant to me. And what exactly is it you think I need from you? Think of me as your best bet for continuing your family's legacy. I may have heard it through the grapevine that you've been thinking about taking over Wayne Enterprises from the old Fox. And where exactly did you hear something like that? <laughs> Believe me, kid. Nothing in this city happens without me knowing about it. All that time away, you didn't want to come back and be a doctor like Tommy? I considered it. But that's not really a path for me. I abhor violence. You can probably understand why. Yeah, I get that. Still... Abhorring violence or not, you know nothing will really ever move in this town unless you get your hands dirty. Right? See, that's where I come in. What exactly are you implying? Come join me over here, kid. I want to show you something. Tell me, what exactly do you see out there? Gotham City. Correct. Gotham City. My city. Your father was a man of vision, and he had big plans for Gotham. But he was smart enough to know that he couldn't do it alone. So, he and I sort of went into uh, business together. We created an arrangement that would benefit the both of us. What kind of arrangement? I would use my many connections to help him get whatever he needed to help the city, and... He would provide health care to my men from time to time, should it be needed. Is that right? Yeah. I even provided protection for your family free of charge because of uh, the history between your old man and I. Not that he knew about that, of course. You did? Yes, I did. I did it because... Despite Tommy's stubbornness, I genuinely cared about your parents and didn't want to see them- Shot to death in an alleyway? What exactly happened that night, then? With you being who you are? How did some street mugger manage to get past your security and kill two of your oldest friends? <sighs> Bruce, listen. I may be good at what I do, but- Nobody's perfect. I'm not omnipotent, despite my best attempts. Ah, so it was just a random incident then. You know, I'm starting to understand why you didn't come around anymore after they died. You didn't want to face me and have to acknowledge the fact that your negligence probably cost them their lives. Hey! Who the hell do you think you're talking to? You look me in the eyes if you want to speak with such disrespect! Do I look like some street rat or a punk ballet? I am the Roman of Gotham City, goddammit, and you will show me some respect! Or what? You'll kill me? Add my blood to the pounds of it that's already stained your hands? Was it even a mistake that my parents didn't walk out of Crime Alley that night? Don't you ever assault me like that! I loved your parents. I would never have harmed them! Maybe not with your own two hands. But like you said, you're a man with many connections. <clears throat> this wasn't supposed to go down like this. How did you think this was going to go down exactly? That just because you knew my father, I would welcome you into my home with open arms? Knowing exactly who and what you are. And what? 
That automatically makes me the devil? If the horns fit. Will you grow the hell up? There is no such thing as good and evil in this city, Bruce. <laughs> if you ever bothered to take off those damn blinders you're using to keep your myopic view of the world, you'd realize that nothing in this city is black and white. Everything that happens here falls directly into the shades of gray. You think that uh, other people around here are slapping away a helping hand just because of who it belongs to? Maybe not. But I know exactly where those helping hands have been. Wow. It seems stubbornness is also an inherent trait. <laughs> you know, for your information, I did try to come by and visit you when you were a kid. But your damn creepy butler stopped me at the door every time I tried. Why would he do that? Because, like you just insinuated, he thought it was my fault your folks died. And, uh, to an extent, so did I at the time. But all I wanted was to let you know that I had this situation dealt with. What do you mean it was dealt with? I mean, I found the rat bastard that killed your parents and made sure he wouldn't ever shoot down anyone else's mommy and daddy ever again. You... you killed him? Yes, I did. So how about you show me a little gratitude... Uh! How dare you take that away from me? Excuse me? I agonized over that man for years. Hoping, begging, pleading that he would get caught and be brought to justice. And now, after all these years, you're telling me that he's just been dead and gone? Are you actually upset? That I had that creep taken care of. What exactly does murdering someone solve in the long run? Where is the justice in that? This is how the world works, kid. What do you think would have happened to him if he had gone to prison, hmm? Think he would have, uh, reformed, uh, maybe become a better man? <laughs> no, that's not real justice. That just means he would have gotten away with what he did. Believe me. If it wasn't me, then it would have just been someone else that iced that punk. I just made sure it was me. No. You just made sure you protected your image. Maybe that's a little true. But image is everything in this town, Bruce. Because of actions like that, no one ever makes a move without having to remember that I own this city. Get out. Fine. Just remember one thing, Bruce. Whatever plans you have for this city, you won't get a damn thing accomplished on your own. If you ever manage to really save this damn place, it'll only be because I allowed you to. There are no real heroes in this city, not anymore. That outdated mindset died with your parents. Consider that food for thought. I can be your best friend, or your worst enemy. And I'd really rather you not be my enemy. If you didn't have them killed, then did something happen between you and my father towards the end? Was it really an accident that your security wasn't around that night? <laughs> See you around, kid. Think about what I had to say. Yeah? Master Bruce, are you alright, sir? Bruce, did he say something to upset you? I'm going after him. What on earth for? Because he just let it slip that he might have had something to do with my parents' death. I'm going to find out for certain. Bruce, that's insane! He could kill you if he- After all these years, I deserve some answers if I can get them. Besides, the mission has to begin sometime, Alfred. And I'm tired of waiting. But what about the party? Your guests! Won't even notice I'm gone. Let them have their fun, Alfred. It's not like they were really here for me.
And I can't wait to be off this damn graveyard shift. Whatever it is that I'm needed for better be life or death. You enjoy yourself at that party, detective? Who the hell? I don't think you're gonna be able to make your shift tonight. In fact, I think you might have to take the rest of the night off. Consider this a warning. Get with the program and stop rocking the boat, or else. Who knows what might happen next? Think of that pregnant wife of yours, Jimmy. Uh, fr <sighs> Batman Year One stars Henry Schultz as Jim Gordon, Cliff Jones as Bruce Wayne, James Lawrence as Arnold Flass, Indrago the Excommunicado as Alfred Pennyworth, Amber Bullock as Sarah Essen, Noel Pennison as Vicki Vale and Martha Wayne, Jeremy Tucker as Howard Brendan, Alex B. as Harvey Dent, Kari Lee as Barbara Gordon. Jake Johnston as Jerry Keane, with Mr. Eli Mack as Commissioner Gillian Loeb, and Wyatt Bowden as Carmine Falcone and Mayor Haiti. Story written and directed by Wyatt Bowden. Music scored by Aaron Weatherford. Audio engineered and edited by Joseph E.W. Series art by Evan Collin and The Knighthood Project. Series produced by The Knighthood Project in CBW Productions.